Welcome back everyone. It is Wednesday, July 15th. It is our 56th day of making art together. So welcome back to day three of working in our 3D realm here. Today we are going to work with totem poles. So I have this um, Native American totem pole and it's made of crushed marble and it is from Canada. And I cannot remember the, the tribe that it comes from. Um, if you're aware of Canadian tribes, you may know just by looking at it where that comes from. I'm sorry, I do not. The original sticker that was on the bottom of it is not there, and that had the tribe on it. So we're going to work with making a totem pole. So totem poles often represented um, the family and the animals, the spirit guides, the spirit animals that were important to that family or watched over that family or that that family needed. So what I've done is I pulled um, things that we might have already on hand. And I have lots of paper towel tubes that I keep. I have a white one and I have a, um, a brown one here. And I'm gonna use the brown one, I think. I've also pulled some colors that are showing up in this totem, um, some orange and turquoise and black. So those are the colors I'm gonna work with today. I've also got a palette of the orange and turquoise here in front of me. And I've also pulled together, um, I'm going to make some wings, I think. I'm going to make one of my animals bird. I've got a piece of black construction paper. I've got um, a glue stick, and I've got a scissors. So again, you may not have all of these things in front of you. I know that turning on the TV and starting a program and then seeing that you're going to need all these supplies can be frustrating um, as anything because I know when I see something cool and I'm like, boy, I'd really like to try that, but I don't have any of those things, can be very frustrating. So if you want to create a totem for yourself or for your family, um, how about pulling out your sketchbook and you can create your own in your sketchbook. You don't have to create it in the 3D realm. I'm just playing around with 3D this week just for something a little bit different. And also just because I was out of ideas for drawing. Now, as I've been thinking this week, um, I have more and more ideas for our drawing sketchbook. So we'll get back to the 2D stuff again next week. But this week I wanted to just take a bit of a break from that. Let my mind kind of have a reset because I tell you, and I've told you before, this can be quite the challenge coming up with many ideas. So as you know, it's really hard to continually think of new and different ideas. And it's one thing when you're thinking about them for yourself or myself, but then when I'm thinking about them for all of you and what might be interesting and exciting to each of you, then it gets a little bit much more challenging. Okay, so I've got some wings here. They're really, really simple. I am going to just stick them on and I'm going to paint now normally I'd lay this tube down in front of me and I would paint with it on its side. But because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing, I am just going to work right on the surface of this while it's standing up. So I'm going to use this as my model just to get an idea of where I could put a bird beak. I got a bird beak, bird eye. It looks a little bit, a little bit like a parrot, which I didn't want it to look like, but that's okay. I'm hoping with some color I can change it up a bit. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna give it some talons. Those were not the best looking talons, but. Okay. I realize working in the round kind of on these tubes is a bit awkward. And this is going to be a very different looking kind of bird. But I think that's okay. T totems are to totally stylized in the in the traditions, in the um, 
style of each artist who may, makes them. And so our hours can be very stylized as well. So yesterday I was saying, or not yesterday, before, some, at some time before, I've talked about the idea of borrowing to be inspired. Now, of course, I wouldn't go start making totems. I know nothing about really making a totem pole. They're, they should be carved. They, um, I should know a lot about the subject area before I start making them, making these pieces for the world. So I am just using the inspiration of this totem, of this artist's totem, to, to create my own. Now, I'm not gonna do anything with it, but I think that totems are really beautiful. They have wonderful stories linked to the families that make them and celebrate the, those totems. So I think they're a beautiful art form, a beautiful personal art form for, for the creator, for the artist. And so today, mine is not personal. Um, would I choose a bird for my totem if I were really going to create one? I don't know. My, grand, my grandmother, Evelyn, she loved owls. So if she were making a totem, I know an owl would appear on her totem. But I've talked before about animals that I really love, and one of them is the armadillo, so that would probably show up on a totem. I don't know if there are many totems with armadillos. Typically, they're... Um, I guess the totems are from the north often, northern tribes, um, the tribes of Washington and Alaska and Canada often make totems. So many of the animals they would see in, in their regions, and an armadillo wouldn't usually be one of them. Wolves, bear, um, other creatures sometimes I can't identify. Um, I'm going to see if I can put a wolf on here as well. So there's my totem. It's starting to look look more like a totem. I wish I had a little something different for the beak, but that's okay. I'm going to add some orange to the wings. You could play around with this, and this could be all bugs. This could be butterflies. This could be birds, songbirds. This could be people. It could be a totem totem of people sometimes like right here on this one and it looks like a mask of a man right here so sometimes they incorporate people into those as well sometimes they really are stylized animals so when we look at the totem we have no idea what animal it is but the artist definitely does so that's what I'm going to do with the next one I'm going to put a wolf on here and it's going to be a really stylized wolf so it may not even look like a wolf at all We'll see. My wolf is going to be blue. And I realize I don't have any black paint or I put some, I'll use some orange paint. Put some eyes in there. It's going to look like a bird, I realize now. Put some teeth. I'll put some teeth on both sides. So a very stylized, not the way I'd normally paint a wolf. But once this dries, I can go back in and add some details with a black Sharpie and maybe get it to look a little bit more like I hope it would. But then I can play around with it too. It doesn't have to resemble what I would typically think of a wolf. So I hope you're coming up with some ideas for your very own personal totem. What things represent you? What things represent your family? What kind of animals would you want to protect you, look over you? What animals do you connect with? Or what animals are you drawn to? I'm always drawn to wolves. Don't know that I ever want to meet one out in, out in the woods anywhere, but I sure am drawn to them. Okay, that is quite the strange looking wolf. Now I'm gonna give him a little bit of a body. I'm gonna make it straight down the to straight down the front of this totem here and give him some big paws. 
Again, very stylized. There's nothing realistic about this totem. Okay, so there I have it. The beginning of my wolf and probably eagle totem. Okay, when it dries, I'm going to go back in with Sharpie and really play around. And I think I might incorporate some of the white. Really love the use of that white with those other colors on this totem. And I think I'm going to try a little bit on mine as well. Okay, have a fabulous day. Keep making art and I'll see you back here tomorrow. Okay, thank you.